What is up? What is up? Hey, hey, wonderful people of the world. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining and tuning in today. This is the Ash Brown Uncensored Show. So this is the show. It's unscripted and anything goes. I'm going to forewarn you guys. There's going to be some profanity today. (laughs) I'm going to drop some profanity because we're talking about some people here. And they require me to use profanity just to really give those expletives of how severe these moments are, okay? How severe, that, and I'll just put it out there, okay? So I'm putting that out into the universe. Yeah, there's gonna be some profanity today. We're gonna drop that. So this is an explicit episode, yeah. <laughs> but it's also a very loving episode, an episode that's very near and dear to my heart. So last week I was doing some interviews and I was actually getting interviewed. And one of the questions that they asked me was who has been the most influential, the most impactful in how I run my business. And the person, the name that comes to mind has to be Burt Weiss. For those of you that are in the Metro Atlanta area or maybe some other markets, you know Burt Weiss from The Burt Show. Now, The Burt Show has been here well over 20 years. I remember when The Burt Show started. I was in high school and everyone was super excited about this new radio station that's coming. Oh my gosh, what's it going to be? What's it going to be about? Who's going to be a part of it? And it was just very much like just everyone was super excited about this station and The Burt Show. I remember them being the first show that was just real. (laughs) I don't know how else to put it. But they were just very much real. And when I say just very much, like we didn't see a show like that before. All the morning shows in Atlanta at that point were very scripted, very much they're putting on a persona, very much they're just putting on and trying to be whatever. The Burt Show came off to me as very much these could be your friends. These could be your neighbors. These could be whoever. And... As time went on, you you started to really relate to these characters or relate to these cast members and hear about their life stories and really feel as though they, Bart especially, never put a cape on himself. He never like tried to make himself to be bigger than what he was. And it always just felt very real, very authentic. I always love that about Bert and the Bert show. So fast forward so I am huge fan of the show always tuning in the cast is you know rotating and changing and different things are happening at the station and I'm at Columbus State University I get my communications degree I got my demo my resume my degree I've got all my references and I'm just I'm applying to every station in Atlanta because I'm like you know what somebody's gonna give me a job I'm gonna work at one of these big stations and Q was, of course, on my list because I was like, heck yeah, I want to work at Q100. The birch, what? I didn't care. I had my degree. And for those of you that have fought to get through school like I did, it took me five years. I'm not going to lie. Five years, two different institutions. And to finally, when you graduate, you're just like, yes, this is a milestone. Yes, let's do this. Let's go next. What's next? And you're just so pumped when you graduate. So you're just so pumped and you're just so optimistic and you're just bright eyed and bushy tailed and you're just so excited. Yes, I'm going to make this thing happen. And nothing happened. (laughs) Nothing nothing really happened for me and the other stations. I just constantly got rejected until I got in contact with the person that was a part of the promotional division at Q100. And I explained to him my situation and everything I want to do. I was like, you know, I don't even care. I just want to come up to the station. I will volunteer my time. I don't care. I'm burning gas. At the time, I'm living in Lithonia. I'm driving to Sandy Spring. I'm just, I got to get out there because this is absolutely my dream. I love this station. It's, it's literally flowing through my veins, essentially. So I got the internship 
And I definitely want to say that that promotional assistant, I don't remember his name fully. I don't fully remember his name, but he was so chill. He was such a good person. He was always encouraging and just a good energy. You know, you meet somebody and they just got a good vibe about them. They just have a good vibe. And you're just like, you know what? I love this person. They're awesome. They're good people. You know, they're going to keep you encouraged. And he's just like, you know, just keep trying, Ash. Just keep doing. You got your demo. Always bring your demo with you. Always bring your resume with you. And maybe he was just bumping me up just to kind of promote me to, you know, to, to keep doing what I was doing for the for the promotional department and just keep pushing. But I was like, you know what? He's right. I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to keep pumping up. Now, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell all truths here. And I thought about it. I'm not going to air this person out just because it's not necessary. It's like, there's so much time that's passed or whatever. But I will say the head of the promotional division was a complete bitch. Oh, she was a bitch, bitch. She was just bitchy for no reason. I was like, bitch, how are you on PMS like 24-7? It's supposed to be like five days out the month, bitch. She was not a pleasant person. She was not pleasant at all. So we hated dealing with her and we loved the assistant. So it was me and maybe three other people at that particular time were specifically for the promotional department. So with the promotional department, we would call listeners to come pick up their prizes. It would really just floor you guys on how much people win this stuff. And they win good stuff. They win tickets. They win merchandise and stuff. And they never come pick up the stuff. So we would end up calling them. We would end up sending out promotional items to people. And we would also pick up the prize book because the prize book has all of, at that time, the prize book had all of the information that all the winners were and what their address and telephone number and all that stuff. And that's how we got the information to call them. So one morning, one wonderful, wonderful morning, (laughs) I get to the station and the assistant to the promotional division is not there. He's out for the day. And I'm like, damn. I got to deal with this witch. <laughs> I got to deal with this witch today. And she was less than enthused to deal with me. She's like, what is this little chocolate thing here for? She she was she was just so unpleasant. I'm like, why do you have one of these jobs where you have to be around people? If you don't like people, just find something else to do, which I hear she found something else. Uh, that's good. That's good. But anyways, so <laughs> I see her and she's like, well, right now, I need you to get the prize book because we've got things to do and whatever, whatever. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'm about to go head to the studio to go pick up the prize book. And before I go, she's like trying to like, I don't know, toot her own horn. She's sticking her nose up in the air. And she's like, look, the morning, she looks at her clock and she's like, the morning show should be out by now. But if they're not, you're not to talk to any of them. You're not to ask them for anything. And if you see Bert, You're not to look at Bert. You're not to ask Bert for a picture. You're not to make any kind of eye contact or anything with Bert. You just leave Bert alone. All right. Just just avoid him at all cost. And so it's painting this picture in my mind. I'm like, gosh, what kind of tyrant is Bert really? Is he really that much of a tyrant? It's it's gonna be bad, isn't it? It's gonna be real bad. So I get to the studio. And one of my favorite jocks at the time, Tracy St. George. Hey, Tracy St. George. I don't know where she, she's at right now. I want to say that she actually, she went to Florida at some point. So I don't know if she's still in Florida or whatever. Wherever in the world you are, Tracy St. George, I love you. And you are always a sweetheart to me. So, yeah. Just putting that out to the universe a little bit. <laughs> so, so I get to the studio and I see Tracy St. George and I'm waving because she's like in a commercial break or something. And so I'm waving to her and I'm going in or whatever. And as soon as I walk in, I see two other figures behind her and one of them's Bert. I'm like, oh shit. Oh shit, it's Bert. Damn, it's Bert. So I immediately, I kind of like freeze and I probably did like a really awkward, anxious, nervous type of freeze to where I was like looking at the ground. I, like I said, I pro- they were probably like, this girl, something's wrong with her. What's, 
is she having a spasm? What's going on with her? And I have like my head down and I'm kind of like, just kind of still trying to scan the room to see like if I can see where the prize book is at. I see it, I reach over and I grab it. And as I'm lifting my head up to say my goodbyes and say my farewells, Bert and I lock eyes from across the room. And I'm like, crap, oh, that's the end of the internship, you know? It was free, you know? I think I got some snacks out of it and uh, maybe a movie poster or two. That's, that's about it. <laughs> So I, um, and so we lock eyes and I, you know, I kind of acknowledge him and kind of like throw my hand up like, Hey man, you know, I'm just going to head on out. I'm just going to head on out. And two twos, Bert heads over to me and I'm like, man, is he going to like formally fire me from this free uh, internship or like what, what is, what is really going to happen? And he comes over and he's like, Hey, you're new. I'm like, yeah, you know, hi, I'm, I'm Ashley. And, um, yeah, I'm just here for the prize book. You know, I help with, with promotions and I'm just here for the prize book. That's really all I'm here for. And he comes over to me, y'all. And Bert wraps his arm around me and he embraces me. But it wasn't like a regular embrace, y'all. He embraced me and he hugged me like we were long lost family. And I'm like, Okay, so if the eye contact thing wasn't going to cost me this gig, the hug was definitely going to do it. I was definitely going to do it. And so we step out of the studio, and he's asking me about my aspirations. He's, he's You know, I'm telling him about school. I'm telling him about all everything that I'm trying to do with my degree and my accomplishments and what I want to do at Q and everything. And he's he's humoring me. You know, he, he, he not like he had really a lot of pull with that anyway. I didn't expect anything from it. But him just taking the time to listen to me meant a lot. We had this moment where we're just sitting up talking, kind of just relating with stuff. And he and his then wife had just found out that they were pregnant with their second child, which is Hollis. I know I'm totally telling my age here, y'all. Mm. But... <laughs> But yeah, so we talk about that and then I tell him about my friend who was absolutely obsessed with him and was totally convinced. She she spoke it into reality. She's like, you're going to work at Kimmer? Oh my gosh. I was like, it's a nothing job. Like I don't get paid. I may get into a couple of really cool events. That's about it. And she's like, it doesn't matter. You're going to meet Bert. You're going to meet Bert. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to meet Bert. I was like, I got a lot of stuff that I'm doing and then the time change stuff. I'm like... I don't think I'm going to even see Bert. And she's like, no, 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 you're totally going to meet Bert. She, she predicted it. She put it out into the universe and it totally manifested. It totally did. And so I tell him that this friend is just totally and completely obsessed with him. And he's like, oh my gosh, we'll call her. And I'm like, what? I'm like, what? He's like, call her. I was like, oh, snap, Bert. Like, okay. So I call this friend. And of course, this is the one time, this is the one time this heifer doesn't answer. And it goes to her voicemail and he leaves this long animated voicemail about her being obsessed with him and how they're, you know, it, it I don't even remember the, the context. It was just, it was a silly, it was a cutesy message that he left on her phone, which was, I found absolutely positively hysterical. It was. And before we parted ways, he just really encouraged me, told me to keep going, don't give up keep pushing towards my dream, keep being awesome and make my dreams a reality. And so we parted ways and that was the end of that. And I was really, that impacted me so much because in my dealings with interns and assistants and anyone to do with my business, I want them to feel important. I want them to feel seen. I want them to feel valued. Because in that moment, as big as Bert is, it's the Bert show. In that moment, he made time for me. He made time to hear me out. He made time to make me feel special in that moment. And and so many people just don't even take that time to even um, listen to others. They don't listen to others. They don't try to take time for it's all about them, them, them. And Bert is nothing like that. I absolutely love Bert Weiss to my soul just for that moment because it, it there's any number of things that could have happened. I could have not been in there at the right time or the right day. But for whatever mood, he had had that long ass shift, that long ass shift where he 
probably wanted to go go home and take a nap or do whatever. But the fact that he took that time, he didn't rush me. He spent time and listened to me. And I so appreciate that for Bert. And I never forgot it. I never, ever in a million years forgot it. And even with that, I do my best to support all what Bert is a part of. So he's got a nonprofit called Bert's Big Adventure. And Bert's Big Adventure is a movement in where they take families that have sick and children that have all kinds of different ailments and illnesses. And they take the whole family to Disney World for a week, all expenses paid. And this is a week that these kids don't have to feel like they are sick or they have to see the doctor and they get to spend time at Disney and play with the characters and eat pancakes for dinner or, you know, whatever else is going on. And the fact that he, in all of the chaos and stuff that's happened in the last 20 years of the Burt show, he can still find time to give to other people. He can still find time to find joy in the world and help other people find joy is amazing. And I support that wholeheartedly. And I will always remember Bert for that. And I definitely wanted to take this time, and I know that I've talked about it before, but take this time and take this moment to give him his flowers because that one moment impacted my life. And even though it may have been a glimmer to him, and, and, and I've seen Bert since, and I've tried to explain to him, and, and he's, you know, he, Bert sees hundreds of thousands of people a year and after a while you know we probably all sound the same <laughs> we probably all sound exactly the same oh you changed my life oh everything's wonderful yeah yeah but the fact that he he took that time with me and I believe in Bert Bert is a real friend Bert is a real person and the same person that you hear on the airwaves throughout the week Monday through Friday that's the same person you're going to see on the street and I salute you Bert Weiss I salute you I appreciate you I love you, you know, my brother from another mother, always putting out those good vibrations, yeah. So, yeah, that's my little uh, soapbox for the the day. That's my, uh, yeah, that, uh, that pretty much does it for me for the day. And this is probably my longest live that I've ever done <laughs> because I actually had something to talk about. Oh, my goodness, I had something to say. But I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for all of your love and support. Of course, the Ash Said It daily podcast show is available across all platforms. Yes, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcast. Uh, we're on Audible. We're on Amazon. Did I say Spotify? We're on Spotify too. You know, we're a little bit of everywhere. If you want some good energy, some good energy vibrations, you know, some inspiration, go and check out the Ash Said It daily podcast show on every single platform. I love you guys. Have a good rest of your weekend. I love y'all. I love y'all. I love y'all. Thank you for all the support, all the downloads. It makes a huge difference. And go make a difference in someone else's life. Appreciate y'all.